You're going to. You know, this is Halloween, right? People are not wearing masks, but they're trying to scare you. And you aren't? They're trying to scare you. If you pass this, then the doctors will leave. That's a lie. If they pass, if they if you pass this, health insurance, you know, insurance premium skyrocket. They're already skyrocketing. <laughs> Let me remind you of something. Let me remind you of something. They are not only are they skyrocketing, guess what? You have not seen a single insurance company going out of business. They're making more money and people are getting less care. Let us buy the state. Now, let me explain something. This, what they're worried that. about is more people competing to provide care. It's a trash business, isn't it? Because business. that means they will have more competitors for the money. So, to scare people out, don't, you know, remember when more people come to your show, don't run away and say, no, 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 no. Tell them, okay, trick or treat, go, go home. <laughs> don't, don't, don't buy the scare tactics. From you or from them? Because the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is. Yes, right now, of course, if you have one of the series, uh, we we'll appreciate your comments, but uh, being a Bernie Max cousin, I'll be able to comment with you, okay? Yeah, the, question right now, let's do it like that. the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is, doctors pay high insurance premiums because when doctors hurt people, it costs <coughs> lots of money. Now, I used to defend doctors. I used to defend insurance companies. And let me tell you something: <coughs> when a doctor makes a mistake and someone can't work and their families can't live, that doctor should pay. And, and every doctor who's in the business of providing care has to pay the health coverage, just like every motorist who's in the business of driving has to pay insurance premiums. That's nothing wrong. That's called good market economics. <laughs> Give you a long okay. Well, you know, I agree. Like I said, we need health insurance reform, and I've already given you a couple of things. Let doctors offer their own health insurance. Okay? That is another idea. If that's the way they sold it out, if you went down to the doctor, you paid this cents a month. So that's another idea. But for those people, um, for those people who are saying that there are no taxes, in the Senate Finance Committee bill that Blanche was voted for, and this is according to the Senate Joint Committee on Taxation, there's $322 billion in that bill in taxes and fees on insurance premiums, prescription drugs, and medical devices. So if you have a medical device, such as a CPAP machine or other things, then chances are the cost of those things are going to go up if this Senate Committee Finance Bill actually gets out and actually gets passed, okay? So to say that there are no taxes on the common people like us and any of these bills, that is completely wrong, okay? Because it will. It will trickle down. You know it and I know it that anytime anybody up here is taxed, they always pass it down, pass it lower until it actually gets to us. Okay. Now, let's have you. Yeah, I just want to, you know, on the Senate Finance Bill, this is, uh, you know, also a Republican senator, it'll be a snow from Maine, uh, back to the Democrats in that bill. And, you know, there's, this is not a Democrat <coughs> issue, this is a moral issue, this is something, we need health care reform here. We have high profile Republicans, like Sen former Senator Bob Dole, who came out and said we need reform. We have uh, the governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who said that we need to back reform now, the, the kind that the Democrats are pushing. This kind of bipartisanship, the polarizing politics, that's all it is. It's a political game. We need reform. I think you all recognize that. And I hope you can see through the scare tactics from some up here and from those out there, too. Thanks. Okay. Let's try this. Let's move back to a lot of questions, uh, one that hadn't been addressed directly yet. Uh, we've, we've heard you talk about uh, the public option, and we know that a public option is proposed, um, and that's some contention of, of debate. Uh, there's some question whether or not the public option that already exists, that's the emergency room for people that are uninsured. 
but to the panel. Can we have true health uh, insurance reform without public option? I believe that we uh, cannot have true health insurance <coughs> without a public option. I think um, the compromise that they're talking about, we're talking about um, a co-op, I think that is a reform in name only. And the reason why is I don't think that co-ops are going to be able to uh, gather large enough pools to actually compete with uh, insurance companies in uh, very, uh, very concentrated markets. I mean, for instance, uh, Blue Cross um, controls over 75% of the market here in Arkansas. Um, it will take a massive, massive pool of people to be able to compete against that good football and actually force competition. Now, if you look at the things that uh, communities are going to have to go through to establish a co-op, banding together, doing the legal deeds and the paperwork, you know, creating a large enough pool, getting enough people to actually compete with the provider that covers 75% of the market, I don't think that's a viable option. I think that we need that public option to come in and provide like, an accurate counterweight, a real counterweight with enough people to force that competition to bring down costs. Uh, I just want to say that there have been four states already tried this type of uh, uh, universal care, nationalized, state, you know, socialized, that's the word, uh, health care. And so anyway, it failed in every state that has been tried. It's, it failed. And if you'll go to TenCare, it was, this was done in Tennessee, look at that state and see how well their state citizens like it. And, and, and the ability to purchase across state lines would be a big deal to me because we wouldn't we wouldn't have to compete then with just Blue Cross Blue Shield. We'd be looking at a lot of these insurance companies, and and it would be opened up to be competitive without the government having control. So check Hawaii, check Tennessee. Uh, what's a couple of other states? Massachusetts. It, it failed. And what's the other one? In Oregon. Oregon, check these four states, it failed and left the citizens bankrupt. Let's, let's say this, that the governors of those states uh, sort of disagree, and the Hawaiian situation is a uniquely different situation. Uh, and it is specifically dealt with in section 186 and uh, title 31 of the Senate proposal. And since we're on that, that subject right now, when you all deal with the public option, deal with the fact of whether or not states ought to have a right to opt out. And I think that's what you're mentioning, is whether or not states can opt in or opt out. Right now, as it exists, every state has an insurance department, and that department controls how insurance companies inside that state operate. Part of the problem with disparity in insurance is those different states' insurance agents, uh, the head of those insurance departments, and the different state legislators. So deal with uh, whether or not we can have health care reform without a public option. If there is a public option, or not a public option, should states uh, not be in control of being able to control the insurance companies inside the matters? If, if, if I can uh, reframe my statement at that point, um, I, uh, I certainly believe that states, in that case, should have the right to opt out if they want to. I mean, that's a, a state's issue. Um, <coughs> however, um, and they also certainly should be able to regulate insurance you know, within their own states. I think mean, it's my uh, it's my position that they most certainly should Okay. Yes. I believe that we need to have a public option because it is the only way you're going to have competition to the private insurance plans. If you're going to require everybody to have be in the insurance market, you have to buy insurance, then why would you require them to all go to the same folks who've been hijacking folks all along? So, as a player, I also believe that the opt-out provision is wise, it's fair. However, I want to lay down a marker right now. We're in Arkansas. Okay. We're in Arkansas. Between now and the middle of next month, we need to tell Senator Lincoln, Senator Lincoln, Senator Lincoln, you have a public option. We want the same one you have. Right. And then we need to tell our state legislators and our governor, 